do the test. Do the test. Do the test. Nur du musst in drei Minuten auf Position. Zwei Minuten, dann startet der Stream. Fünfzig Sekunden. Dreißig Minuten startet der erste Einzug. Okay. 
Okay, ein Spieler startet. Ein Spieler startet. Go, go. Full ah. gas, Luna. Go ahead. I think, I think he's in the tunnel, or? <laughs> Luna, come on. Oh. How far is it, Luda? Tell us. How many seconds do you have to go? Uh, half a minute. Okay, good. Cool. 30 seconds. Go ahead. Full gas. Put everything out. You can. It's your last sprint. <sighs> Whoo, guys. That was hard. But that's already 12 weeks ago, the FTP test of Alpecin Cycling, and now we are here once again in this beautiful facility in, facility in North Rhine-Westphalia in Bielefeld. It's the so-called service course of our cycling project from the Dr. Wolf Group. Dr. Wolf, you know it, the famous manufacturer of Alpecin. And yeah, once again, you guys know, and hopefully a lot of you took part in it, The Alpecin Cycling Challenge today comes to its end. Today is the final, today is the second time the status quo. 12 weeks ago we did something like the initial, the basic test to see, okay, where are we? Then Corona crossed our roads and we had to somehow get along with it and train. And Björn Geesmann, X Steps, now High Size and Daniel Beck, Those two guys I will present later on helped you with tips, tricks and training plans. Um, 20 minutes in two hours doesn't seem a lot. So what do we else have today to entertain you a little bit? We will face a nice meet and greet with Tanja Erat, the female pro rider from Kenyan SRAM who just won a stage of the virtual Tour de France and I'm super happy this rising star and upcoming superstar will join us today and not only for an interview but also inside the FTP test and we will for sure also have two professional riders of the team Alpecin Phoenix, Alexander Krieger from Germany and uh, Jonas Reichert. Both will join us and also not only for an interview but also for the FTP test. This is a little bit the rundown. We will have different commentators. We will have our beloved all-stars inside their pain caves at home around eight o'clock, a little bit after eight o'clock p.m. So ah, let's have a look how they suffer or not. Huh? I can imagine some of them will just look and see, ah, and look how we are suffering and they will be on the couch eating chips. Yeah, we will see. I'm very happy. And if you want to join this pretty crazy 20 minutes, please have a look onto YouTube. The URL is mentioned there in the descriptions. So you can still join. Our FTP test starts with a warm-up session around 7, but we also generated a late check-in. But I would really say, and uh, my English, um, I would really do a good and proper warm-up because I remember from the last time 20 minutes they are really hard so don't step in too late. The good thing this time is I'm not alone. I'm really happy even with the corona problems we are able to have guests here and this is the nice thing One of our riders, who, which I actually really meet the first time this year in person, face to face, is Meindert Klemm. As you can see, he's a proper fit guy. He's a flying Dutchman. And yeah, welcome Meindert. Please quickly present yourself. Talk a little bit about your background. Why do you look like you look like? And uh, where do you come from, your age, all those kind of things. So, uh, I'm Ant Klem from the Netherlands. I, uh, I'm 32 years old. I just had a son. He's 11 months old now. Cool. And uh, I come from rowing. Uh, I was lucky to be uh, quite good at it. The short distance or the longer distance? I mean, the longer the better for me, but okay. the 2K, so same for everybody. 25 lactate acid. Uh, not for me. 
But I heard you've been even in the Olympic squad of the Netherlands. Is that right? Yeah, twice in Beijing and London. Wow. So we really have a fit guy here. You can see the yeah, legs. A long time ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I've been sick. I've been ill. I've been this. I've been that. I couldn't train. It was always raining. Nobody's never fit. I know that. But hey, thanks for joining. It's really cool. You are here. Um, okay, you have Corona. You have your kid. Somehow you have to make money. You have a job. How could you get along with this new crazy situation? Okay, no homeschooling, but home entertainment. I guess your wife works in a, in a hospital, hospital, so she has pretty crazy days as well. Yeah, so that's pretty crazy. She, uh, she worked long days. Was, uh, you know, the training we do is uh, very easy compared to her work. Um, and the kids, I mean, the kids are great. It's difficult. So actually, Corona for me was, for the training was quite good because usually I'm away. I'm uh, in hotel rooms. Uh, I sent you a picture at some point. I was stuck in a bathtub, pretty much, yeah. in a hotel in Birmingham. I mean, it's tough to train. Uh, being stuck at home, you know, you have everything. Uh, it's perfect for training and the schedules. Now uh, we have a problem. Your test 12 weeks ago was already on a level <laughs> where everybody was like, holy ghost, is this a pro cyclist? So you said you could train a pretty good uh, efforts, but what do you think? Could you even slightly at least increase or do you think you will be on the same level? What is your opinion uh, about the next two hours? Um, it's always tough, but uh, I feel a little bit stronger. Uh, I didn't gain weight, which is good during Corona. Oh yeah. Um, and difficult. I, it was difficult. <laughs> uh, and the training was good. So I think uh, I should be at least the same, and I think I improved a bit. I feel more comfortable, more certain of the level I'll push. Good. So uh, last time I, you know, trying to figure out where, yeah. where I could sit for the first 10 minutes, and now I know yeah. a little bit better, and I feel more comfortable doing this. Good. Uh, but it's still going to be tough. <laughs> ah, 20 minutes are always tough. Huh? I did it many times. You. It's not fun. It's not fun. It's never fun. Even with good legs, then you want to reach another level. I mean, so, you know, you, I've done this, these kind of tests for 15 years now. Yeah. And still, I, I get nervous, you know. Can I push myself deep enough? Can I, ah, that's uh, an you athlete. know, once the legs start to hurt, can I go yeah, for this, it? I think this will never end. I have the same, even if I write a RTF, uh, a, a, a cyclotourismo tour, in the end, when we are really on the starting line, and yeah. then it's three hours. Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess this is a little bit what makes also a bit the difference. If you have been a pro athlete or not, you will never lose it. I mean, I know people who really lost it. They want to have nothing to do with it. But on the other hand, I know many, many people like us always challenge. Always it's, challenge. It's a mindset. Uh, it's you know, a the mindset. other day, I was riding to a barbecue on my city bike. I had the kid in the front. And there's this guy coming past me on the hill. And he was on his racing bike. <laughs> and he just... You have to go. You can't let him go. Ah, it's crazy. Uh, two days ago, I came here and I checked the bathrooms and I said, oh, let's clean them up. We get guests. And I cleaned the bathrooms like the devil was behind me. So it's always, yeah, uh, sometimes I wish I could be a little bit more relaxed with it. But yeah, I think if you have been a pro athlete, you really stop or you keep going with this mindset of uh, lifetime challenge wherever you are. Yeah. The guys I know that stops, they're still, you know, whenever they start running, it's crazy. But can I take your child already under contract? Sure. Because you are an Olympic rower and your wife even won a gold medal in rowing, right? Yep. She so did. this DNA, I guess this is really, really nice. Mind that, really nice to have you here. Good luck, fingers crossed. Yep. And uh, I guess with the shape you are in, you will really, really do a good yeah. and perfect test. But today we have support from a lady. This is also very nice. And I know she suffered tough times. That's why I even more love to welcome Valeska, Valeska Krull from Bonn. And uh, she's also for sure a member of this year's Team Alpecin. And uh, yeah, Valeska, let us know a little bit about you. I know you opened a pub really early when other Girls still play with Barbie, not really, but uh, really, really crazy life. 
uh, challenge and um, yeah, bars and pubs and all those kind of things suffered a lot in the last weeks. Corona has forced them to close, has forced them to really double check uh, how the future would look like. How did that circumstance um, in, uh, treated you and how did you get along with it? Riding your bike, not riding, kicking it in the corner. How did you, how did you get along with it? Um, first of all, I really have to say that I'm totally fine despite the corona circumstances. But uh, being outside, be with my bike, have time for myself really helped me to stay mentally strong and uh, um, really oh, helped good. me to, to stay in routine. And it was really good to be, to be um, tired in the evening, even without my daily usual work. Uh, I can imagine. You look pretty fit. So Thank you. I don't think you have gained any weight and uh, no. you trained, so... I followed very strictly my plan, yes. Yeah, I guess Björn Giesmann and Patrick, the guys from X Steps, we have to still learn. Uh, it's high size now. We talk about that later. Really good institute, taking care of guys like Patrick Lange. They helped us a lot to get through this crisis and to help us. They even sent motivational speeches onto our Wahoos, huh? Yeah. That was crazy. So Daily plans. But they double-checked also if... Eh, what was yesterday? Rainy or what was yeah. going on? So, yeah, I, I really like that you also took this chance and possibility. Yeah, we are well known for supporting our hobby riders pretty well. And this year also my arms were locked a bit. So we did the hopefully best possible on the virtual it's a strange year for everyone, so we can't, Let's we can't change it. Let's make the best out yes. of it. Huh? How are your plans now? We have heard we can maybe, hopefully, do still our hero event in Nice, Le Tap de Tour. That's what we are aiming and we are going for. That's what we have these nice canyon bikes for and why we are training. Yeah. How do you think this will influence the future with the um, more open... Um, uh, situation regarding Corona for your pub. Do you have to work even more? Do you have to do every day a concert? I mean, in the end, you have to make money, yeah. but you still also want to ride your bike and want to hopefully come with us to the Tap de Tour. I have a great team at home. Um, they they helped me a lot through the, the last weeks and uh, helped me still. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, the pub suffered a lot and it's uh, still not easy so we have to go on and do the best we can and of course I will I will go to let up the tour cool if you can do it fingers crossed it looks pretty good so hopefully no wave will come across um, at home before you entered team Alpesin, did you train in groups did you train uh, alone it's the first time for you to use Wahoo power meter and all those kind of things or um, did you enjoy this, this uh, controlled analytic training before already as well? I always cycled by my feelings mm -hmm. and uh, I think I will do this again. But uh, being uh, controlled by my, my um, FTP and my, my numbers is uh, really helpful to stay in form maybe. And uh, um, I, I cycled by my own, I cycled with my boyfriend and with my friends. I really love to be outside and active every day. So, from this, what you mentioned, you love to cycle outside. Yeah. Doesn't mean you hate to cycle indoor. No. You combine the best of both worlds. I combine the best of both worlds. Um, cycle, cycling indoor means uh, the, the best of the training, but cycling outside is more than training. It's being outside, being, being free, see the nature and free your mind. Okay, cool. Okay, then we talk a little bit what is going to come in the next minutes. Thank you for the moment, Valeska. Fingers crossed also for a good yeah. test. I hope so. In the end, it's 20 minutes all out. We know about it and we know it will be hard, so it will be okay. So the next things we are going to do is that I will present my two colleagues in Hamburg. We have, as mentioned, Björn Giesmann from High Size, which oh, four weeks ago Four weeks ago uh, has been called Steps for a long time. It's a very, very well-known 
um, German Institute for Sports Analytics, Training, and those kind of things. It's now called HiSize. Check it out in the, in the internet. And uh, on the other hand, we have Daniel Beck. He's the uh, former uh, co-editor, main editor of the Road Bike Magazine, and I'm very happy he's with us. We are doing this hobby cycling team and ah, the whole Alpecin cycling project together since 13 years. So those two guys will guide you out there later on when we are suffering. They will answer all your questions. We have the chat. You can write down all in, uh, interesting questions you have. And yeah, they know everything. Team Alpecin is, as mentioned, a project which also kicked this idea of this Alpecin Cycling Challenge. It's the 13th year and yeah, it's the most crazy year since since uh, the beginning and normally we in March go to Caldero to South Italy uh, now to Northern Italy to South Tyrol impossible to this year then we have many many cool events like uh, the Rhone bike marathon Frankfurt on the 1st of May incredible uh, impossible to imagine to not go there and this year nearly every week we just briefly met one hour, one and a half hours in the virtual world. We presented, or we took the chance to give the slot to our sponsors. You see all of them, thanks a lot at, the, at this uh, opportunity for still supporting this great project, even in this pretty tough time where we cannot represent you. And uh, now we have to do everything virtually. Um, a little bit we could arrange, some little things we could do. For sure we have sent surprise packages. We packed boxes and many, many sponsors surprised us with goodies on top and goodies on top. Hey Lude, they suffer. Hey, Valeska cannot sell beer. You have to send a mini tool. You have to send new shoes. So really, really, really much appreciated. That was really great teamwork and yeah. We will have some pictures. As mentioned, we couldn't do too much. We couldn't really uh, do a photo shooting, but step by step, we are going there. We are doing this today, the final of the Alpecin Cycling Challenge. And for sure, we will have more things to come. The Alpecin Cycling Series will be with the next, with the second run on the 26th of July. So um, now we will have some more pictures of those two guys and the other team members. This year we are 14. Some little pictures, uh, not too much what happened this year so far, but at least a little something. We are getting closer to our start, to the start of the warm up on Swift, as mentioned, final today of the Alpecin Cycling Challenge. 12 weeks, and now today we double check how our output will be. So I will move onto my bike. I will start around seven o'clock into this meeting. You will uh, find it, as mentioned, on the YouTube descriptions, and you can still join a little bit later if you don't need so much warm-up. We have the opportunity of the late check-in. So, guys, fingers crossed. All will be good. 20 minutes is 20 minutes for everybody. So, we start moving. Ah, oh, Today I had to move my office, and I to be honest, feel it a little bit in the legs. 
I have to start with the first excuses as I'm a old guy, but at least not a fat guy anymore. I could at least lose three kilograms since the last test. Training was a bit tough. To be honest, home office wasn't a big deal for me because my little one at home thinks, oh, daddy is at home. And when daddy is at home, there's Barbie, there's Playmobil and there's trampoline, as for many others of you for sure as well. So to be honest, I struggled to really ride my bike a lot due to the Corona crisis. It was not an advantage because I go to the office by bike always or at least when it's dry. So uh, this is not a real excuse, okay. Mm. But I trained hard the last 10, 12 days, but in the end, as mentioned, I could at least lose some kilograms. Okay, we are already in an event time name that's German, boom. So now I'm in the event, Alpecin Cycling FTP test. And we have eight and a half minutes to go. I'm already now on my Wahoo trainer on the start line. And as mentioned, we have a nice little warm up. Thanks again to our great new partners, Swift and Wahoo. We are really, really well located from the setup. Many riders will participate. I got many promises. And I know that a lot of riders want to double check and control their form as they really did our trainings plan provided by Steps beziehungsweise now high size. Björn Geesmann and Patrick. So now it's time, seven and a half minutes before it's time to present the main guys of this evening. They will not sweat, they will have chips, chocolate, pommes and mayonnaise. And I see them already, so <laughs> hi from Bielefeld. I proudly present the first time our riders, Valeska and Meindert. So happy to see you guys there as well. The technical background, thanks to Simeon, seems to work really awesome. So hi Björn, hi Daniel, how are you guys? Everything fine in Hamburg? So fine over here. Hey, say hey to you guys. Looks good what you're doing there. Thank you. Yeah, we start a little bit the warm up in front of the warm up. And yeah, we are happy to have you guys here, well educated guys, to let us know a little bit more about FTP, what it's all about. We will have the chat. Robin will help us in the background to provide the questions to you, and you can then check them and answer directly. Involve the questions into your commentary. That would be really great. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, we try to do our best. Uh, as mentioned, we will have Tanya Erat, the current stage winner of the female virtual Tour de France from last Saturday with us. And we will have two professional riders of Alpecin Phoenix. Five and uh, no, six minutes to go. And if you guys want to start to talk a little bit about your idea, which you had 13 weeks ago and we started 12 weeks ago, so we really pushed it out of the nothing about the FTP. What's the maybe the difference between FTP and the aerobic, anaerobic barrier and all those kind of things? I have already seen many questions. That would be great. And we concentrate a bit on riding. So I hand over the word to Hamburg. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Lude. Um, before we start explaining and talking and so on and so on, I got a question to our riders who are already warming up by now. So I really liked your introduction. Thanks for that one. Um, also, the understatement, like, um, yeah, not really I heard from Minded, and I know your FTP values from the last time, so this is really understatement, I would say. What I would like to know from the from our both uh, riders would be like, 
um, compared to the test we had nearly three months ago, what do you think about your performance, hopefully enhancement for sure, what do you think how many percentage you could, you could put up on your FTP by now? So just from your feeling of uh, maybe while looking on your power meter, on your device, yeah. but also maybe about feeling your legs and, and everything which has to do with your performance. What's yeah. your prediction? Okay, um, our coach is asking both of you guys what you guys think. How did the training go? Uh, did you like it? Did you like how high size followed up with you? And what do you expect? Maybe ladies first, and that would be cool to give somehow an introduction of your current feeling. Um, I expect my new FTP a little bit stronger maybe, I really hope so. But I know that my last results were really good, maybe much more better than you could imagine when you see me at your first sight, because I'm a small and not so heavy person. But much more important than my new numbers and my new FTP is the fact that I never felt so strong and safe on my bike. And uh, I really hope I can hold the form for some, for some future adventures in cycling. Sounds really good to me. Thank you. Thanks a lot. And mind that, what about you? I think the training was uh, very diverse, which made it a lot easier to do so much work on the trainer. Uh, when I stopped rowing, I don't think I expected to do any indoor workouts ever again. And. Uh, I actually enjoyed them a lot. And it makes you a lot stronger, I think. Um, but I feel pretty fit. I mean, it's hard to say if it improved, but uh, I did a lot of uh, work on the trainer, and I think. Thanks a lot, mind that? Yeah, it seems we are all ready to rumble. And I keep my fingers crossed for everybody who did the training with high size the last 12 months, outside, inside, on the trainer, outdoor, whatever. I think everybody had to cope with this crazy situation. Homeschooling, home teaching. I, I mean, from one day to the other, you got new circumstances. And I can even say I'm, I'm super glad with my mother-in-law and our company is really providing great service to all employees regarding taking care of kids and home office solutions but I know also that not everybody could get that so first of all thanks to everybody joining and thanks for everybody who really tried to get through this three months 12 weeks and listen to Patrick and Bjorn but yeah, yes. normally we start our podcast uh, with uh, with normal questions, and uh, the typical question is, uh, what is what is uh, on this day normal in uh, cycling life? Do you have an idea? So you mean concerning what you normally do when you are a cyclist by now? No, what is on the fifteenth of July, twenty twenty? <laughs> if ah, we have okay. no Corona pand pandemic, ah, good question. <laughs> I, I, I think I got you with that one. Depending on some day in September, must be like the last Saturday in September, where there's correct me if I'm wrong, a, a classic race, a Vuelta stage, a Giro stage this yeah. year, and so on and so on. So fifteen would have been, in my uh, in my imagination, the uh, highest point at the Tour de France normally this year so that's why we picked that uh, that date of the 15th of July so uh, everybody sitting on the rollers today or on the indoor trainers just imagine you would be somewhere in the Alps climbing up that hill being in good shape for sure after three months of training and uh, celebrating your performance yeah correct yeah the the idea behind this uh, 15th July is uh, that in normal times, that will be the Queen stage of the Tour de France 2020. And uh, from our motto, Next Level U, it will normally today, uh, the riders nice. had, oh, had climbed uh, the Col de la Loss. It's, uh, oh. it's, an, it's a hidden um, mountain pass in the French Alps. And I think uh, that will that match really good to today because uh, this day, all the participants and all our team members 
will uh, will climb to a to a next level or will ride to a next level. Hopefully, hopefully. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let, let us talk a little bit about the idea and what what are uh, so special on the last three months in in point of training. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's just have a have a short flashback to to what happened in March. So we were pretty ready. Uh, to start the whole Alpecin uh, cycling project um, with the L'Etape du Tour, with the training camp, like Luda said in the introduction and so on and so on. And um, yeah, then I think everybody knows the story about Corona and uh, no chance to go to Italy for training or to Belgium for training or also to, to participate in the L'Etape du Tour on the uh, common day it was set to. Um, yeah, and then we thought about that Corona cannot kill the whole project. So we... Uh, had the idea of inventing something to yeah keep up the motivation to also have a target a goal for training and that's why we did um, or had the idea of doing two FTP tests and um, yeah having the the best training in between these two tests over three months and um, yeah main goal was uh, not to climb the top to tour maybe we can do that later in the season there was the more or less like the second goal to stay in shape and to celebrate uh, cycling in summer also on the outside. Um, and first goal was to yeah um, enhance the performance, the power output um, throughout the test. And that's what we're here for today. So finished off the first uh, main goal and we'll see how the performance output looks like today in comparison to, to mid of March or mid of April. Sorry. Yeah, we have... Uh... Your your company and your your um, coaches uh, are uh, do um, are writing training plans for different levels. Yeah, we give all our all our uh, community members or all people who who want to ride the chance to to do a three months training plan for free, and we have uh, three different categories because it depends a little bit how many time you have in per week. Yeah, and I think uh, we have uh, at first the Gran Fondo riders then the second uh, the performance riders and the third the 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 race and yeah. uh, more yeah, the, for, for the power horses yeah and that the training plans are different but the the goal are will be the same to to have a better po power output after three months yeah exactly and um i think in the whole training process you got two main things about it so first one are the categories like you said who totally depend on a realistic scenery about your training per week so are you able to train like six weeks uh, six hours per week or are you able to train even more like eight or more than 10 hours per week depending also about uh, on how you can use the weekends for example for training and so on so the categories are just about how many time you can spend on your bike if uh, possible in the normal week and with a realistic um, time goal and the second one um, the second part of the whole training was um, the performance, for sure, which we detected at the first FTP test. And um, uh, depending on the first FTP test, we had a threshold. And um, out of this threshold, out of the number, like how many watts you can, you can push for 20 minutes, or uh, then um, detected on that one, or depending on that one, your, your threshold power output. And um, that was related in training zones then, and then you had... The training zones, depending on your own performance output, the categories, depending on your training volume per week, and then you could start, uh, could have started training for, for three months, and hopefully, like Valeska and mine that uh, predicted, uh, power performance is better than, than three months ago. Yeah, you say the the team, the the fourteen cyclo sportive riders who um, who are in the team have will do not the, the same plans, but uh, they have, there's the same strategy behind the plans because yeah, sure. uh, it's, it's a strategy of, of high size to do a really efficient uh, training, training planning, yeah? To do yeah. In, in, in a short time, a, a big output, for example, yeah. with intervals, for example. Yeah, for sure. It's always about detecting the normally the physiological profile and having training not like depending on only the hours you can train or the target you have, like riding a bike marathon or something, but also to put the physiology um, on the first level. So um, what we normally do in our main business is um, to have a performance diagnostic uh, with nearly every athlete we train. 
and then um, we have the individual goals for the athletes about what is your anaerobic performance, what is your aerobic performance, what is the uh, are your do's and don'ts in training depending on your physiology, and then you get an individual training plan. And what we tried with the project was for sure we couldn't do an exact performance diagnostic due to corona, um, but what we then did were like some kind of CP testings on the outside with perform with your power output and so on. And then we had like individual training plans for all our Alpecinis, um, where you also, not like a standardized plan, had the chance to say like, okay, if I'm on training camp or if I have a week uh, on holiday and so on and so on, I could also train even more. Or if I needed to recover a little bit more than normal, then you could put the training volume down or the intensity down and so on. And then out of that one, what we tried for the whole Alpecin community was to create three different training plans over these three months with the different categories where the principle in training your VO2 max, lowering your lactate production rate, high, hiring your performance output or your threshold um, is the same principle. And we try to adapt that one to a standardized training plan for everyone. Björn, can you okay. explain a little bit? This is, I guess, super important because I get it <coughs> asked so many times. And that's why we exactly invited those two team riders. I guess Valeska is around half the weight of Mindat or me. Yeah. So the output at all has nothing really to say about the power. Maybe on the flat, but as soon as it starts to get hilly, the yeah. watt per kilogram ratio is very important, I guess. Yeah, and totally. This is also the, the measurement tool which uh, feeds the algorithm on Swift. So if, yeah. you, if you are a fine and nice guy, you put your real the weight into, weight. your correct weight into Swift. Otherwise, it's a, a bloody thing to cheat. But what is so important about this ratio? We know yeah. for sure Valeska will never ever be able to, be, uh, to push 400 watts in the FTP, but she can still get rid of us in a steep hill. Yeah. Uh, let, let me let me interrupt because I think it's really interesting for all uh, participants and for all the people that they that they know the numbers from the first test and I think it's it's really funny. Um, my eyes are not so good. Sorry. Um, mine that is uh, has an uh, has an uh, uh, a test from with 430, and he his weight is 88 kilograms, and he has an FTP from from 390. And the power to weight ratio is 4.4. And Waleska is normally we, we don't talk um, about uh, weight of a lady, but in this case it is allowed. It's only for science. And Waleska is the opposite of a heavyweight female rider. Her weight at the first test was just 52 kilograms. Lude, you are right. And her, her test result was 230. Her FTP calculated by her coach was 207. It means in total power to weight ratio of for what per kilogram wow. um, a total different body composition but nearly the same ftp in relation to the weight and now it's uh, now it's the explanation all these numbers uh, that's that's your part Jan. I'm, I'm totally in love by now as we are just talking <laughs> yeah i guess th since 10 minutes and we had a whole lot of day now. so really fine talk You're strong man uh, just to nice just test. to say it again daniel thanks for the uh, for the numbers um what we have is Mindart, huge power output, absolute values. And due to that, also, as he's not weighing like 100 of kilos, uh, also in relative values, so like 4.4 watts per kilogram body weight. But the difference in relative values is just 10% in comparison to Valeska, whereas the uh, values in absolute data is like nearly double. So from 207 to 390 watts. Um, but yeah, like Luda said, it's very, very important to differentiate between the absolute data and also the relative data. As you can imagine, for sure, body weight in the flat part of, of riding, uh, not really a problem, can be definitely a benefit. That's why you will never find a time trial list in world class with like 62 kilograms of body weight. But when it comes to an uphill climb, um, yeah, body weight definitely 
plays a bigger role than on the flat part. And therefore, Valeska has a very, very good benefit due to the good comparison of even having a high power output of 207 watts on threshold, but also compared to the 52 kilograms of body weight, ah. which is like four watts per kilogram uh, uh, performance output for a lady is, yeah, I mean, very, very good values. We can ask, maybe Luda, you can ask Tanya about her actual data later. That yeah, would be I a will. thing to see um, how it would look like for a world to rider. But four watts per kilogram body weight is, I mean, I would say you could stay in the peloton of uh, world-class riders. I, I would not say that you can win a race, that maybe not, but um, four watts per kilogram body weight would enable you to, for example, ride a very fast um, uh, cycling marathon in the Alps, for example. Well, I'm happy we do not do any analog events at the moment because we have many of those guys with a fitness level like that. They would so badly kick ass to me. So maybe Corona helped a little bit as well, but yeah, compliments, hey man, 410 and 4 watt per kilogram, that's crazy values. And as mentioned before, correct me if I'm wrong, Bjorn or Daniel, but if you're on this level already and not a rookie, the improvement of the last 5, 7, 8, 9, 10% is dramatically more difficult then for sure for a rookie who just started and was a runner 10 kilograms and five years ago, right? Yeah, totally right. And um, like you said, if you take, by now we have two examples of the group who are very fit, but you can take nearly every other example of the group. They are all very, very fit. As I see no data lower than like three watts per kilogram body weight, with it, which is also very, very good. And, and you said it totally right, Lude. Um, if you want to increase that performance output, you have to do not only like, okay, riding your bike like like the weather is like, for, for example, but you also have to maybe sometimes stay on the indoor trainers, yeah. maybe bring a little bit more structure into it, maybe defining your targets in training, so like physiology uh, targets, so hiring your VO2 max, lowering your anaerobic uh, performance output, for example. And you're, you're totally correct that it's not that easy to do so. So um, You know me, I'm, eh? I'm, I have a nickname, Analog Luder, and I loved to be structured and to be forced onto the high size road. And uh, also, yeah, to have a guidance through these crazy days. Okay, I need to go. Or now I'm doing virtual Tour de France commentating on... Eurosport, and I didn't know about Swift, to be honest, 12, 15 weeks ago, I, I, I didn't know what it's all about, but no deep dive, no inside views, and at least I have to say this corona crisis brought me to another mindset. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and um, I think it's also a good uh, possibility to even higher the motivation for example I mean we can ask the the both riders of us um, how it is when on a rainy day you have the chance between okay yeah letting your bike being in the in the flat or in your house and not going on the outside or putting the bike on the indoor trainers and maybe having a program on Swift which means like go for a warm-up, have four times uh, four minutes on your threshold, for example, and then you know, okay, it's like one hour of training, but it's highly efficient, as you know, that you can hire your VO2 max values with that one, and these are really, really, really good training kilometers, even if they've done uh, them on the indoor trainers, for sure. And, you, and uh, yeah, effectiveness is always important about that. And you save so much time. That's a crazy yeah, thing. For sure. Uh, yesterday... I had to clean my bike twice, washing the clothes, this and that. Yeah. Brutally sunny summer again in Ostwestfalia. I guess we have three sunny hours per week. So the main job is cleaning the bike. I just still laugh. Oh, I don't give up thinking positive. Bam! Next cloud. Ah, whatever. What are we so going... What? To do today we do 20 minutes full of suffering and we have a reason for it so double check the next pictures it's a little bit of background about our hero event 
Le Tap de Tour 2019, what we did there, how we did it, and as mentioned, please, fingers crossed, I also want to do it this year in Nice. That's why we do diet, that's what we are doing all this training for, and also the upcoming 20 minutes. We have a little trailer prepared for you, so double check the next pictures, and you will see what Alpecin cycling is all about. We are not there to win. Huh? We are more or less there to make cycling, individual cycling dreams become true, to give people the background to feel like a pro for a year. Over the top. It will be a long, long day tomorrow. We have to get up early. We will be back very late. Latest forecast. Let's have a look. We have um, already more than 20 degrees early in the morning. For sure you have to prepare everything tonight as you have to get out of the bed and on the bike because tomorrow we will not have the time. The number on the bike, the number on the jersey, the bottles have to be filled with the content which you want to have. In the evening you only please eat what you are used to. Yeah, my strategy for tomorrow is, um, you know, just yeah, start it really smooth and slow and maybe at the end I try to push it harder if I can. I immediately thought back to the Grand Fondo because it was such a big group. We had a thousand people in the starting area and uh, with the select group when I crashed it was like two or three hundred. At the moment I'm like um, nervous, excited, but I'm really, really happy too that I can experience all this with all of the team up the scene. So I was like, okay, hopefully this goes well. Don't go too fast at the start. You won't win the race, so, so take it easy. We started together. I think I lasted about sort of three miles with Marco, Toto and John. Only John could really stick to, uh, to my wheel. He lost a lot of weight and you could see that as well. When he was climbing, he went like a, went like a beast. And, and then I catch David, the, the big Hamburg uh, guy. In the descent, we yeah, got together and we stayed all the way together to, uh, to Valtorens. And then took on Valtoren, which was the longest, hardest climb I've ever done. 36 kilometers, all uphill. I think the average gradient was like 7%. The weather was incredibly hot. Nothing can, can prepare you for these long alpine kind of passes. And that was it. It was, it was the hardest ride I've ever done. I cycled a lot already, but I never have done an altitude like that on 135 kilometers. So I just want to see the finish line. I'm not thinking about it as a race. Maybe a race for myself, but certainly not a race against 15,000 others. I guess I'll be happy if I'm not the last person to finish. And then obviously coming into the top finish, you think, yes, smashed it. And then it's like the last 400 meters, all uphill, 15% again. The last 400 meters were yeah, crazy. And then on the final corner as we're coming in, some of the guys have painted all Team Alps and stuff on the road. Motivational boost to see your name. I think I even shout out, that's my name, that's my name. When you train so much, then you have a goal and you finish the goal and you know why you do this. But it's not only about goals, it's just about experience. Like nature, yourself, your limits. Yeah, I guess some really nice pictures and yeah, fingers crossed, hopefully we can do it. That's what we are aiming for. That's what we are doing all this for. At the moment, it looks good. Hopefully we will not have, will not face a second wave of this 
corona issue. But yeah, at least we are getting prepared and yeah, I'm really happy about the values of my of my hobby team riders as then you can see they take it for real they they take it serious yeah this is a little bit what it's all about yeah you have to use the chance we offer otherwise it's also a lost year so if you commit yourself to team alpacine it just makes sense and it makes more fun to really enjoy it and we will do this also in corona times but last but not least we are with alpacine cycling with the big project we are doing since 71 years maybe we are the oldest sponsor in cycling worldwide we are also investing into worldwide publicity with a professional cycling team we started with the great victories of giant alpacine with Degen Kolb and Dumoulin, then we saw many, many victories of Alexander Christoph and his Katusha Alpacine boy group. And now we have a really crazy, cool new project, a multidiscipline project with under 23 riders, female riders, and for sure superstars like Mathieu van der Poel. And yeah, I'm also really happy we will have those two guys, Jonas Reichert and Alexander Krieger of Team Alpacine Phoenix with us. But maybe even cooler, we have, I guess, the most important and strongest female road rider with us. And not only for an interview, Tanja Erath, the sympathetic female rider of Kenyan SRAM will join us and pedal with us. She just won the virtual Tour de France stage on the last Saturday. And here we go. Hi, everybody. Yeah. Cool. Good to see yeah. you. Yeah. On the left, I can see Alex Krieger and Jonas Reichert is with us as well. So hopefully you can hear me. Can you guys hear me? Hello. Alex, if you can hear me, please say hi, everybody. I love to do the FTP test with you. Uh, if you can hear me, you have to switch out the YouTube stream. Please put on only the Zoom. Because Zoom is in time. And we can hear you and you don't have Rückkopplung, which is a word I never know in English. You can hear me, you can see me. Hi everybody. Wow, sehr gut, very good. Very good, good to see you guys. Can you also hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Hey, great, you are joining. You look pretty skinny, you look good, you look in shape. Jonas, how did you get along with these crazy times and what will be the next race you are facing and did you like the e-cycling background or do you hate it? <laughs> no, I like it because it's like always one hour for us and uh, it's good to know where you're standing yeah. but uh, I prefer to race on the road again and uh, for me it starts the end of July in uh, Bulgaria. Your face. Sorry, I didn't hear you. Can you repeat? Sorry, I didn't hear you. Can you repeat again? Uh, uh, my racing starts again uh, the beginning at the end of July in Bulgari. Okay. So uh, I will. Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, race on the road again. Yeah. Uh, Fingers crossed. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Everything will really work out as we really hope at the moment now Tanya has joined as well hi Tanya hopefully you can hear us already good to see you hello Leonard yes Leonard Klein I can see you ah, the helping hand of Tanya Erat always with her 
for Zoom calls and power-ups. Tanya, I will come to you in a second. Jonas, thanks for the moment. Have a good test and Alex, can you hear me? We can see you, we can hear you, but you are still figuring out the right position. We can hear you. Okay. Alex, can you hear me? Tanya, I will come to you. Maybe not. Tanya, I'm super happy as you are not from an Alpecin team but riding a beautiful Kenyan bike to, to see you joining us. And yes, for sure everybody wants to know if this has been a real big success or just a little something for you. I've been so happy to do the commentary last Saturday when you won your first virtual Tour de France stage. And to be honest, I was even surprised how the media took it and really broadcasted Welt.de, Cycling News. You've been, all, you've been all over the planet. So give us a little bit insight. How did the race go? And did it already change a little bit? Well, the race itself was really good. Like I felt controlled and easy most of the time. And uh, the girls really helped me to get the sprint, po the sprint point so I could save my energy for the final. And uh, yeah, I looked at the course really in detail and had a, had a good plan for the final. And uh, yeah, I executed that plan and it worked out. So. I was super happy and uh, yeah, I mean, it's only a virtual race, but in times where you do not have a normal road race, it's the only thing where you can measure your strength. And I feel like I made a lot of progress in the last few months. And uh, yeah, I hope the results showed that. And uh, yeah, I'm super happy with taking that win. And even you as a winner of the e-cycling Swift tool in 2017, which in the end brought you to the road racing and brought you to the World Tour female pro contract and level, even you learned because you could have maybe won the first or, the sec or second stage in the Tour de France virtual as well, but you failed a little bit, right? <laughs> well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't exactly call it a fail, but I played like the safe card in the first race. Uh -huh. It was a, a late KOM or QOM, and I knew that if the climber is going to push it yeah. really hard in the final lap, I'm probably not going to be there. So I thought, better take a jersey home okay. than nothing. So I went for the, for the sprint point, and uh, yeah, in the end, I also ended up uh, getting some of the mountain classification points. Yeah. But yeah. Um, Maybe a little bit ambitious, but uh, yeah, taking home the green jersey still felt really good. Perfect. Yeah, that was great. That was really great. Uh, thanks for the moment and thanks for making this happen. Thanks for being with us, Tanya. Really, really oh. much appreciated that uh, rising superstar comes with us to suffer because even for you, 20 minutes are 20 minutes. Um, exactly. May I ask about your numbers or do you just don't want to speak about it to not give any hidden feedback to your current no. uh, concurrents, to your enemies? I'm still working on the 300 mark. Maybe I'll make it today. We'll see. <laughs> Normally I'd never ask a lady about her weight, but you look super fit. I would say you are around 47 to 49. I don't know exactly how tall you are, but is that close? I'm uh, 64, 65. Never ever. <laughs> yeah, I'm 171. Oh, okay. And, uh, I'm not a lightweight. You're taller than your boyfriend, Leonard. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's I'm fine. coming close. It's I'm fine. not allowed to wear shoes. 
Hey, thanks for joining. Alex, can you hear me now? Now it looks good, yeah? Perfect. Hey, Alex Krieger, Alexander Krieger, who just joined our team, Alpecin Phoenix, as a Eurosport commentator. I checked him several times and I had him on the radar, and which is a pretty cool thing. Tanya's boyfriend, Lennart, who was just a little bit in the picture, he said, hey, Alex Krieger is riding for us. He is a really great guy and he's strong. Let's talk and give him the chance. And this is finally what happened. And you even scored the first points in the virtual Tour de France for your team, Alpecin Phoenix, last Saturday, which is great. But the next day was super hard. Eh? Hey, hey, your boss is riding as well, Philip Rotov. Did you see that? Oh, ha. The team manager is riding with us. So we have to do a good job. No, Alex, how did it uh, go in the virtual Tour de France? Did you like it? And how different is e-cycling towards road racing for you? Yeah, let's say it was really special. Completely new experience. And in my eyes, totally different. Totally different to world race, to road racing as yeah, it's full gas from the beginning. It's really hard to recover even a little bit. And yeah, I learned that a little bit by pain. I talked with Max Walscheid and he mentioned he's 90 kilos, but he had to push 438 watts for one hour to be in the first group on the last stage. And you have no micro interruptions eh? in a corner you have to fully push in a downhill if you don't have two degrees decrease and at least 58 case an hour you still have to pedal if you get lost the group away two seconds in front of you you suffer so hard to close the gap so it's a different world, but from my point of view, and correct me if I'm wrong, it's a super good training tool. And what, what I've heard from some of the managers now in the first training camps, the guys with the full lockdown haven't been worse than the guys who really could train outside. Can you, can you say it's, it's like that? It's the same for you? Maybe Jonas, um, Jonas first. Uh, yeah, we met the, the team earlier two weeks ago and uh, I saw everybody was on a high level and uh, was ready to race. So uh, I think the guys who, who had ride on Zwift did a really good job. And it's hard mentally to train every day on Zwift, but uh, I think become stronger in the head and uh, yeah. you can keep it with you to the road races. I mean, in the end, it's pretty... <laughs> Tanya, what are you doing? In the end, it's pretty cool. Eh? Swift just got invented five years ago as a community tool. And now we are really collecting charity money out of it. We have a virtual tour de France. People from all over the planet can ride with each other so this is cool hey van der Poel says right on so double boss is watching uh, alex how did you get in touch with swift did you train already the last winters on the indoor trainer or are you the dirty guy mountain biking cross ride and fully fully full of mud back home and cleaning your bike two hours. I'm actually more the guy that cleans his bike, rides outdoor. Like it's completely new to me. I think I got to learn Swift, got to know it by Leonard because yeah, he works there and yeah, yeah, he told me about it. And obviously I'm a bit behind because the platform is super big, but um, 
yeah, for me it's pretty new. But uh, in the past, I yeah was more outside, even in bad weather. Took the skis, whatever. Yeah, in the end, you you learn the skills. Eh? We have learned from a Swift Insider that you guys adapted so crazily fast. Uh, they have compared the Tour de France stages with Swift races done before, and some of them have been ridden in the fastest times ever. So you guys adapted pretty fast. Maybe it would also be cool to see some Swift pros on the road. I would love to have more races combined, to have the Swift pros inside the digital world. Hopefully this will happen because it will generate more spectators. And if I would be somebody, when Corona is over, creating and doing a circuit race, like 80 rounds around the Kirchturm, I would also invite the Swift pros. So, last questions for the three of you before we really have to suffer. What are you expecting of the upcoming weeks? Do you think it will be more equal? Because World Tour teams do not have the advantage to do Tirreno, Adriatico or Paris-Nice up front. Pro Conti teams, do you think guys like Tanja Erath have advantage because they are so well trained because of the Swift experience? What will happen? Eh? We, will, we will be at point zero. It will be curious, no? You still mean me, Lude, no? <laughs> Sorry, I didn't get you. Is it, mean to, is it me to answer still? Oh, ladies first, Tanja. Let us know a little bit. What, is, what are your expectant, expectations? expectations? Yeah, I'm really curious what it's going to be like. I think um, everyone is on a completely different level because some uh, train well or even better. Some had struggled to motivate themselves. So, yeah, I think it's going to be really exciting how the first races are going to be. If, uh, yeah. The normal favorites are still the favorites, or if things change. So I think, yeah, the first few weeks of the season are going to be really exciting for everyone. Cool. What are you going to do first? Do you have already a final race plan, Tanya? I don't really have a final race plan, but I'm racing Spain um, next week. Um, so yeah, the first few races uh, are on my schedule are more hilly. But yeah, uh, looking forward to test my form there. Cool. What about Rolf Aldag? We all know him as the crazy guy, still super fit. Can you beat him with your skills in the digital world? Or is he already really doing well also in the, in, in the virtual world? Yeah, I think Rolf was by far the one who wrote the most time on Zwift of the whole team Whoa. because he was in South Africa and he was in full lockdown. And uh, every time I came to Swift, he was already Swifting. Whoa. And when I left, he was still Swifting. So, ah, it's yeah. Crazy. Rolf Maybe Aldag never back. changes. Huh? He's the most fit guy above 40 years old. But cool, then I, I like it. I love it because then you can talk about it in an authentic way. You feel it, you know when you guys suffer and you are really inside it. Jonas, yeah, absolutely. thank you, Tanya. Jonas, what do you think about this crazy situation for guys with the only one year contract or with a contract ending in 2020? Uh, they are under enormous pressure to show in three months what they will what they are able to do and now they had already the mental strength you already mentioned to train indoor now the season starts and then if you have knee problems you get a cold or you just have stomach problems i guess many of them will be 
super nervous. Eh? Well, how do you feel about it and what do you think might be a good solution how to handle this? I don't know. It's, it's summer, so it's good for to don't have a call this moment. But uh, yeah, I think everybody is trying to, to, to stay healthy and uh, with the uh, corona rules and the uh, mouth masks, it's, yeah, it's also better for us to don't get uh, sick or something. So, uh, yeah, I think the pace in the races will be higher than normal because everybody wants to improve themselves. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I think it's hard for the guys who, who, who are in the last year contract, but I think uh, they all will be on a good level and uh, they will show themselves. Yeah, I think everybody sure. understood that there are just less chances, but I've talked with your boss. If everything will be okay, we still face about 100 race days this year. So I really appreciate everything Canyon SRAM and Alpes in Phoenix are doing. We have already sent thousands of liters and millions of disinfectional items into the cycling world to help at least a bit to not get infected and to get through it in a best possible way. Uh, I know Alex Krieger has just a one year contract and he didn't get too many chances so far to show what he's able. So Alex, how are you going to do it? I know you are a precise German and I know you are very well trained, otherwise you would not ever have a, be able to score points at the KOM in the Virtual Tour de France. So you are fit, but how do you handle this current stress level, level for a pro rider? Yeah, it was pretty special in, uh, in the Corona lockdown because as a pro rider, you normally have a lot of structure. You're always traveling and yeah, it's pretty new to have a lot of time. So you have to build that structure somehow else. Now, of course, there's some, some pressure coming up as I should perform as fast as possible to hopefully new, renew my contract. But yeah, it's easier said than done, but it's about keeping cool. Yeah. Just doing the job, doing what's asked from, from me by the team. And so, yeah, make myself work full and so the team needs me and hopefully resigns me. Uh, I guess I, uh, I think, I guess you have one of the coolest, but really coolest guys in the team. If it's not Mathieu van der Poel, then it's nobody. Huh? If I remember 60 Ks an hour in the field, everybody afraid, oh, there's a stone on the road and he just kicks, his, uh, uh, kicks it away with his front wheel. And as far as I've heard, he also gives this low pressure to all the teammates and he's just a young guy, a young boy loving to ride his bike. I even heard he got an e-bike from Kenyon to do cycling on the rest days. So then you really have to be infected, not by Corona, but by cycling. How do you feel when he's there? Is it a special aura or you just think, ah, Mathieu is there. Jonas, how long do you know Mathieu? And is it just a roommate for you, a teammate? Or is it also a bit, ah, superhero is coming? Well, I know him from uh, the youth category, so uh, then he was already one of the best. And uh, ah, cool. I keep seeing him growing every time, and I'm wondering when it will stop because <laughs> even now, the last weeks, we trained together, he was, I think he was stronger than last year, and so uh, I'm really looking forward to race with him. And, uh, yeah, to see him winning some classics. 
Cool. Alex, how about you? How do you get to know him when you entered the first time the team? I think you never really saw him before uh, face to face and with the little ra race days you had, maybe you only saw him in the first training camps. How is your feeling and relation? Is he more the kind of superstar or still a young grounded guy? What do you feel like a... I know you cannot say he's the biggest ASS age, blah, 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 but yeah, just give me an authentic feedback. Do you, do you fear right ne riding next to him to not make him crash or is just the teammate like the others? Yeah, it's not just a teammate like the others, but it's also not that he's a superstar. I think it's, if you look at his Palmares, at his victories and everything, it's quite normal to have from my side, uh, like say healthy respect yeah. from him. And I think also, if you regard, if, if you see that he's hyped like a superstar because he also is like, he can be world champion in three disciplines maybe. And um, if you have that in mind, I think he's pretty grounded. Cool. Um, he's one of the most, like he's, he's making jokes at dinner and like he's, um, yeah, trying to make it funny as well. Cool. Oh, that sounds great. Tanya, let me know how, how, it, how it felt when you as an e-cycling lady, like three years ago, when everybody said, oh, those Swifters, they are crazy. Uh, we don't want to have anything to do with them. How, how did they react when you as the Swift e-cycling all over winner got a contract at Canyon SRAM. I mean, for sure you are sympathetic, you got welcomed, but did you get, uh, uh, for my English today, uh, did you feel well immediately and you got respected immediately? Um, yeah, I was surprised. I also thought that some of the girls might be, I don't know, strange towards me. But I think for them, I was rather a fixed gear racer uh -huh. than a scooter, and they kind of respected that, so that was all right. Sounds great. So there seems to be not too much hierarchy, and uh, I guess it's the same feeling a little bit at Alpecin Phoenix, what Annemiek van Floyten today mentioned. I mean, it's always good to have some money in cycling, but uh, yeah, everybody seems to be pretty happy. The Spanish money so far didn't went to Mitchell and Scott and everybody's a little bit happy, more happy than expected that Mitchell and Scott keeps going like an Aussie and pretty cool team. But I'm curious how this will in the end happen. So Mathieu van der Poel cannot be with us today, unfortunately. He gave us a ride on, but for sure he will be with us. And he's here, he's with us. And in the end, it's all about marketing and selling shampoo. So Mathieu van der Poel. Van der Poel. This is Mathieu van der Poel. He loves cycling so much that he wants more. More energy, more fun, more performance. Wow. I always want more. That's why I use Alpacin. Alpacin caffeine shampoo. More than a shampoo. And I also want more. I also want more of this flying Dutchman. I really like him. Even if I couldn't talk too much so far to him in person. But yeah, I really hope we will face those mentioned 100 race days. And we can maybe join Mathieu winning or performing. For sure he will not win everything, this is impossible. But he's just also a cool entertaining guy. He rides on when he crashes. Remember Harrogate, biggest, biggest error in his life, not eating. And then he passed his hotel 
instead of going out of the barrier, we saw him crossing the finish line. So this was showing his real character. And now I really have to deep dive into this test with Mindart and Valeska. She's not even looking anymore. Fully concentrated. Ah. OK, guys, Hamburg. Hamburg, Bielefeld is calling. Please help me and take over and give us some insights about the FTP testing and all those kind of things. People are maybe already asking in our chat. So thanks for the moment. Full gas for the next 20 minutes. Go ahead. Yeah, guys, push the pedals. Yeah, uh, Björn, let us talk about uh, FTP and what we are okay. doing uh, uh, um, in front of uh, the last uh, 20 minutes. We talked about a little bit about power to weight ratio and we we uh, we get a question in uh, on, on YouTube and um, the question is uh, what is more important for young guys or for young riders the absolute power or the what per kilogram ratio what what do you think so do we have a clue about how young not really okay. I say I say 14 15 so uh, most important is having fun in my opinion so when it comes to being like 14 or even younger uh, especially in the first years of riding your bike, it's all about the fun part first, I think, because um, you should not only fix on the values um, as having fun. And like Valeska said in the whole introduction, being on the outside, uh, respecting the nature and um, yeah, ride, just riding your bike is always the most important part. I think when it comes to the um, sports science part of that question, I would say, um, yeah, it totally depends on what kind of body type you are. So, I mean, um, if you are a taller guy with maybe some more muscular system uh, like the other guys, then you cannot uh, just look on watts per kilogram as you bring a little bit of body weight with you. And therefore, maybe you should um, focus more on the flat parts. Maybe it's more about the classic parts. Maybe... It could be some kind of uh, cross parts, a little bit difficult, maybe, depending on your body weight. But um, I would also turn it around and ask myself about what is my body composition? So how tall am I? How much body weight do I have? And second part is about my physiology. And um, also you have a prediction over there, depending on your, let's call it DNA, if you want to, or the genetic part. And um, if you know these two things, you should um, more have an eye on, depending on that one, um, on what you focus on while riding your bike. So is it more the flat part or is it more the uphill part? If it's more the flat part or if you are a rider being a little bit more heavier or a little bit taller, then you should maybe focus more on the, on the flat parts. If you are like a meter 70 uh, height, uh, and weighing like 50 to 60 kilograms or 55 to 50, 65 uh, kilograms, then it's totally fine to focus on the on the upper parts for sure. Yeah, and okay. go he's more 16. On, the, on the mountains. I see. He's 16, but I think that will be the same. I fun saw again. In... <laughs> fun again for sure. And then okay. uh, if it comes to structured training, depending on on what you aim for, uh, for a type of rider you want to be. Yeah, I I uh, uh, wrote an interview with Alex Dorset, and he said. Better for young guys is to buy uh, a BMX bike mm. instead of a power meter. Okay, yeah. now you you are Good also point. a fan of data, but I think you you yeah. it's it's the same. You have the same opinion, or totally, especially as Alex Dowsett is one of the most clever guys in the peloton. I think. Um, he's totally right with that one. So um, I think Matthew van der Poel is also a good example. So we had him before. I guess he didn't have a power meter when he was 16 years old, but he's riding his bike with a perfect technique. So um, that is way more important than just looking on data. But for sure, I mean, if you want to focus a little bit more on that one, then a power meter should be first thing uh, before buying a 8,000 euros carbon bike or something like that. But um, having fun, focusing on technique, knowing how to ride your bike downhill and so on and so on, way more important when you're 16 years old, I think. Okay, before, um, I think we want to go a little bit uh, deeper in, uh, 
in in science of the of of FTP. But let me ask you one one question. We we talked about numbers. We talked about uh, power to weight ratio. We talked about absolute FTP. Um, I think sometimes we have normal cyclo sportive riders like me, more weekend warriors, and I think it's it's not every time important to have this power to weight ratio. It's important if I if I'm riding on Swift, okay, but if I if I ride in Hamburg and it's really flat, I think then it's the absolute number. It's it's more important, yeah. Yeah, totally. As um, as body weight does not really play a big role when it comes to flat parts. So if you want to um, uh, point out the factors which are important when it comes to flat parts, for sure, absolute power output. And then, for example, aerodynamics is way more important than your body weight. So you could count way more on that one, uh, depending on your CDA values or whatever you want to have. But um, yeah, I mean, then we again talk about the question, is that really necessary when it comes to training rights? I mean, if you have the power output, whether it's absolute or relative, um, and then maybe you can have like a focus like we had with the whole project to ask yourself, depending on your body weight, depending on your power output, depending on, depending on your physiology and so on, the question about where you want to be in like, depending on the time, like three months or six months, next season, in spring, whatever you have for a, for a target or a goal. And um, then the question is, depending on you, where can you be in this and that time and so on? And that is what I would focus on. So not, mm -hmm. not focusing on relative values you know from Swift, for example, as, like you said, it doesn't play a role in, in northern Germany or wherever you have flat parts, for example. Mm -hmm. Um, you, you spoke a little bit about uh, aerodynamic and numbers, and uh, you are the, the personal coach and the mastermind behind Patrick Lange, the two times Ironman uh, um, champion. Yeah, And I want to ask you, do you use in training, for example, FTP tests on the rollers or you, you do FTP tests on the field? Yeah, Or uh, what is... Uh, What, what is the relation between laboratory tests and, uh, and field tests and tests on, the, on, the, on a smart trainer? So for me, it's, uh, both is important. So you got the performance diagnostics in the lab as they are a little bit more precise and they give a better insight in all your uh, physiological profile. Therefore, it's definitely important to have like, depending on your training phase, it's like, not like Corona times, training phase in Corona times is slightly different to normal, but if you have a normal season, a lab test for three to four times in a season is always recommended from my side, I think. Um, what you then do is to more or less validate the values on the outside as you do have a difference between a lab test and the test on the outside where you definitely feel more comfortable um, and then you have your own power meter, which more or less has some difference maybe to our SRM power meters in the lab, for example. It's easy with Patrick as he is sponsored by SRM, so therefore it's nearly always the same. Um, but then what you want to see is if the athlete is not only uh, able to get these values on the paper mark uh, you have in the lab, but also on the outside. And Honestly, the outside test always is important about the setting you have because um, doing a lab test in December is easy as you're not related to the weather. Doing an outside test in December depends on where you do your training camp for sure as you're not able to do that one in Germany or in Austria with seven degrees on the outside maximum and, and rainy weather, for example. Um, but if you're in, on training camp, it's fine. And in my opinion, it's always a bigger motivation for the athlete to do a critical power test or an FTP test when you ride up close to Luke on Mallorca than being in the lab. Um, yeah, and then I think it's a setting of both. So best part would be to have like three to four times doing the lab test and then like, yeah, three to four times also doing an outside test in training camp where you can validate the lab testings or also have some insights on your physiology um, depending on the, or uh, especially in the time between the two lab tests. So if it's like three to four months in between, it's always good to have an update due to an FTP test on the outside. For example, on closer look, like six weeks after the first training uh, weeks and so on, or like in between the middle between the two um, critical uh, lab tests. Okay, if we if we transfer all this for to normal cyclosportive riders, what do you think? What will help? Uh, 
one or two lab testings and then uh, make, uh, I think, all three months or all two months an, an FTP test? Is this, is this an idea? So first, just, just to get a bit of a background about why doing a lab test and why doing an FTP test on the outside. So if you have the lab test, an optimal lab test would show you your own physiology. So it would give you an overview about not only your training zones or your status quo in performance, but also about, for example, your aerobic and anaerobic metabolism. And if you have that one, for sure, that one changes throughout the time as hopefully training uh, increases your VO2 max, so aerobic uh, metabolism or lowers your anaerobic metabolism, for example. But um, if I would have like a perfect, let's say, testing season, if you want it like that, then I would say also for a normal athlete, a first um, lab test at the beginning of the season to directly determine your physiological things you should train in, uh, change in training from now on would be great if you can validate it like three to four months after it to see how your training worked out. So did the VO2 max intervals, for example, higher your VO2 max, which would be great. Otherwise, you should think about your training. Um, that would be the second part. And then you take like the, the uphill test, the FTP test, whatever, wherever you do that. Um, to, for example, um, validate your training zone. So let's take an example. If you have a threshold of 250 watts with the first lab test and you have it like three to four months in a row, um, then you can hopefully be sure that your FTP hires about like 10 to 15 percent, depending from for sure where you come from. Mm -hmm. um, but in between, it would be great to update your training values or to get an overview, a first one, a slightly overview if the whole training is 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 doing what it what it was assumed to do, um, and therefore a test on the outside would be really great. So two times lab test would be really perfect if you have so. One time would be great to know the physiological profile at all in general for you, um, but then you can do the FTP test. Honestly, how often you want? I mean, it's not only about a good test; it's also about a good training ride. So therefore. Uh, yeah, change your inter hard, high intensive intervals with an FTP test and training uh, adaptation should be nearly the same for that one, but it also gets you a good overview about your actual performance output. Yeah, yeah you say it. Uh, the, an FTP test is also a good, um, a good tool to determine training zones, or that, uh, sure. that will help, uh, sure. I think, normal riders that they have an idea what is uh, what is good for aerobic endurance? What is uh, yeah. what is their threshold and and so on? Yeah. Let's take the example from Training Peaks. Um, if you download a training plan from the Alpacine project, you will find uh, like uh, values for aerobic training. You'll find values for threshold training and so on and so on. The question will always be about what's your threshold, as you have to set up that one to validate all your training values and therefore. Um, it's good to know that one, yeah. Okay. Um, what is, uh, if, if I do the test for my own or I make a field test, I do it indoor or I do it outdoor, but I think that um, it's, a, yeah, it's, a, it's a hard word, um, but it's, uh, it's good to have a protocol for this, mm -hmm. that I do it on the, on, the same, uh, on the same time of the day and with the same food before and in front the same the, the 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 kind of the same rest day for example yeah it, it, all this will help me or yeah totally i mean standardization is uh, maybe the biggest one you have to secure while you're doing an ftp test so and you talked about a lot of factors um uh, who, who are having to do with the power output in the end after the 20 minutes so first things first i would say be healthy before you do the test uh, be rested before you do the test. You don't have to do it after four days of training in a row, for example, because then it's not really your FTP you have when you are healthy and fit uh, and rested. And then if you have the chance to standardize the setup for your testings, then it would be really great to have the same setting throughout the whole year. So same procedure would be like if you are doing your tests on the indoor trainers, for example, in winter, it would be really great to have also a test on Kloster Luke or Mallorca, but if 
for the really precise comparison, it would also be great that after returning from Mallorca or even before you go to Mallorca to update your training values, maybe, it would be really great if you can do some indoor testings with the same setting than before. So same indoor trainer, same bike. In the ideal way, same uh, same time of the day, same breakfast before, a lot of carbohydrates to secure your uh, carbohydrate stores, for example. And um, yeah, then you would get a good comparison in between winter testing and spring testing, for example. Totally. Uh, yeah, you, uh, you said it a few minutes before. We have on the own side, we have this FTP test, but between these FTP tests, I think we all need structured training or I think this is special. We have this on this Alpecin cycling challenge. There were three months of, of special training or structured training, not only go riding or go outdoor. Okay. Do intervals and do, do perfect resting. And sometimes in, we have a, a special, um, special training, training uh, units where you have uh, ride it with low carbs. For example, we talked about in the, in, I think in the last podcast about, how is uh, the nutrition uh, uh, combined with, with training or with exercise, for example, because training is exercise and nutrition. Um, uh, what, what do you think uh, about structured training? How many weeks I have to train if it, is, uh, um, if it makes sense to make uh, a second test or to, to, to look I, uh, if, I, if I become a better rider, for example? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah good question. Um, first of all, just to a structured training ride is just to ride your bike for three hours, for example. So sometimes the people are afraid that every minute is planned and the, that you always have to look on your training plan and do what is on your training plan. But sometimes a training plan or a training ride on the training plan in a structured training plan can mean mm -hmm. just to ride your bike as it's sometimes also good to just do it with easy, basic endurance training and so on and so on. And um, to your question, so the difference in between what we have to um, put an eye on is that it takes some time to have some physiological adaptations. Mm -hmm. So if you want to hire, for example, your VO2 max, you'll have a physiological parameter, which is really fast in, adap in adapting to, to training. So I would say if that is your main physiological goal, then you can do a retest after like six weeks, for example. What you have to have is a good training block, like two weeks and then one day of resting or three weeks and then one, not one day, but one week of one resting. Week, yeah. yeah, and then do the test again. So it could be possible also to do it like four weeks, for example, or five weeks. If you have the other physiological goal to, for example, lowering your anaerobic um, um, parameters like the maximal, maximal, maximum lactate production rate, then that parameter takes a whole lot of longer time to really have an adaptation on that one. And therefore, I would say it's a question about the physiological one, but VO2 max values can be validated like every four weeks, for example. And there you can do the 20 minutes test like every time, every Tuesday hey, after a rest class. week, let's say. Quick hello. Good to see you. Good. You are taking part. Thank you. Woo. Woo. Okay. Yeah. Now we see our uh, team team members on the on the pain pain cave. Okay. Wow. That is really good. This is. Oh, that was Tim. Yeah. And. Uh, Three hands. Wow. Hi, right, Patrick. It's a former. Uh, it's a former uh, uh, team team member. It's uh, it's called now All Stars. I think. Uh, He's also a client of you, Jan, or he was. He, he's now doing uh, Ironman because uh, normal riding is uh, it's too easy for him. Uh, I don't know why you're doing that because <laughs> riding your bike is the main part of the sport. So, so we invented the bike to not run anymore. Why are you <laughs> running? <laughs> Good to hear that from an Ironman coach, right? <laughs> Good advertisement for, for myself and for the sports I'm into. Perfect. Yeah, really cool. Yeah, he has a really nice pain cave, with, uh, yeah, it's it's also a, a guy from from uh, from 2018, I think. It is uh, it is Frank. Okay. Greetings to Frank. Yeah, it's, I think this is Anya from this year's team, but I'm not sure. It's it's not easy to see it in the a little bit on the. 
with the, with the lights, but uh, really, really cool. Yeah, um, that's that's really cool. I want to to say a few uh, words about this uh, Alpecin cycling community. We started, um, uh, I think, in 2007 with this project, and um, we have uh, many, many old team members because you are only one year in the in the actual team and uh, after that yeah you become if you want to say like an all-star and all these guys are are meeting uh, each other at, at races or training camps or so on and it's really nice that's that's andy it's from from the bavarian alps from algoy and uh, he's now uh, really hard pushing for the german cycling cup but uh, in this year, he is also only training, and uh, he will also uh, uh, get a better uh, FTP. And I think uh, he's uh, really uh, sweating now, and he looks a little bit like a, a werewolf. Yeah, it's uh, really, really cool. <laughs> this is our guy from from the UK. We have three team members this year from the UK, and uh, yeah, they all they all give the best, and they all have a really, really nice uh, nice values. But uh, we get um, one more question from the community, and um, this is uh, uh, from the Berkshire cyclist. It's it's also a an, uh, an, 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 an team member from last year. He he asked us uh, in the days leading up to an FTP test, what training or riding should you do? Sh should you be doing? So as you should be, first of all, rested. So it should be. So if you want to have it in the best way you can have, will be some kind of. Uh, several days of resting, so a rest week would be really great as it takes some time to um, yeah, get all the physiological adaptations after you put the training onto your, your muscular or your mitochondria and so on. And after a rest week, I would also always recommend to have just one or two rides before doing directly the FTP test as you have to be a little bit more, yeah, let's call it warmed up, which doesn't mean that you have to be warmed up in that direct uh, FTP test, for sure, you mm -hmm. also have to do that. But to wake up all your muscles after uh, and your cardiovascular system after all the resting. And um, what I would then recommend is to have a slightly intensive training ride on the day before. So, like, if if we want to do it in concrete, um, so like two times two minutes on your threshold, so easy, not really, not really hard, um, but some kind of intensive and then doing the test on the next day. So could be yeah, totally comparable to a, um, yeah, let's call it pre-race ride. So if you have the day in front of a race, and race does not have to mean like a cycling marathon in the Alps, for example, but if you want to take a stage on the Tour de France and you want to see how the professional teams are doing their rest days, it's not about having just the legs up high and doing real kind of resting. It's also about riding their bikes and doing a slightly type of intensive workout. And this is what I would recommend on, on the day before. But at first, you have to be totally rested for, for doing that one. Okay. Okay, I think they are in the... the that really of, uh, looks good. Three minutes, or? So oh, what, do, what do we have there? Are the 20 minutes over, Luda? How is it going? Uh, yeah. Once again, hard, 20 minutes, but I will ask my teammates how it really went. We go back. I always look there and there because I see the guys there. Sorry. <laughs> I say thank you to Hamburg. Oh, thanks for commentating what we did and giving us a really nice deep dive into the world of training science. I will now check my teammates and say thank you for the moment. Thanks for doing this and for establishing the Alpecin Cycling Challenge. Hopefully you guys also join us on the 6th of July for the next Alpecin Cycling Series run. But now, ladies first, let's have a look. Valeska, how did you go? How do you feel? And are you satisfied with your output? It was uh, very helpful to do the suffering on a virtual climb. It was oh, yeah. uh, a really good motivation and I saw that my best friend joined us in the meeting. Cool. I saw him on the screen that motivated too. But for now I'm totally happy 
to be done with it. It was but really hard. I really fully agree. Eh? Uphill is by far a different thing than against the it's wind. It's a mindset. Again. Mindset, yeah. Mind that. How did you go? It was a little uphill? strange. It wasn't the uh, steadiest, the last one. Yeah, to me, it was a little bit difficult. I didn't see the average, but I uh, checked in the... Wow. I had a heart rate from one of you guys on my computer. I never go to 188. <laughs> so it looked crazy. I said, wow, I I'm getting younger because 165, I'm... my legs already is blow. Yeah, I think with a couple minutes to go, I was at 194. Yours? I'll check, yeah. Wow. It's up 194. Here. Ooh. Still young. I would be on the ground. <laughs> Should say it somewhere. 195, okay, he's young, eh? he's a young guy and your output has been great, you think you are, you are satisfied and everything went like you expected more or less? Yeah, I mean I expect to be a little bit steadier but that's pretty good, I could push and good. yeah, I'm happy, uh, I feel like I can still make a step. But, uh, your weight is like for your cycling life, the maximum, uh, because you always have this this level where you lose also power when yeah. you get too lean, and if you are too fat, you get dropped in the hills. So, do you think this is the, let's say, setup of your body which gives you the best for a, for a pretty hilly stage like in Nice? No, I could lose some weight. Um, I'll try. It's actually nice to have a little sure. bit of weight. You have more uh, power to push, yeah. And you know, the Netherlands is quite flat. Yeah. So, uh, but for hills now, it definitely helps to lose some weight. And, uh, Cool, but you're, both of you smile. You are not too much. Ah! <laughs> she even won a jersey. So, first victory for Team Alphacin this year, Valeska. Thank you. And yeah, we are nearly done. And uh, thanks for joining. Thanks for watching. Thanks for cheering or suffering with us. Really happy oh, you joined us. And if you want more information, if you want, yeah, tips, tricks, or the dates where we will be where, hopefully, fingers crossed, in Nice, in, on Mallorca, wherever we are able to go, please subscribe for our newsletter. We are not sending out too much information, marketing bullshit every week, and in the end, you can also go out of it and what's, what's subscribe, and the opposite is desubscribe? Unsubscribe. Unsubscribe. Subscribe. So, really cool input, really cool content, mainly done by Stefan, Daniel, and by Björn for sure. Thanks for joining. I need a Heineken or a Flutlicht from my boss, and hopefully, you have a cool, cool, cool beer at home as well. Thanks for joining. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for being in the Alpecin family. See you latest 26th of July.